They've been overdue for 470 miles. Shame, shame, shame on us. Please make an appointment with your service center. Well, I made an appointment with myself today. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Party People today. We're working on this 2017 BMW X1 X-Drive. We have a brake pad wear service light on this car. So we're gonna go inside the car, take a look at the service indicator, and see if we can get more information. And uh, if it needs new pads, we're gonna throw new pads on it. Vehicle info, vehicle status, service required. So right there, it tells us front brake pads. So now we know. So now you know how to go check if it's the front or the rear and if you click on that you get a little bit more information so uh, they've been overdue for 470 miles shame 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 on us please make an appointment with your service center well I made an appointment with myself today so we're gonna go take a look and see how worn these pads are hopefully there's not rotor damage if you're curious about the mileage on this car 41,806 miles which I think is way too early to have to replace brake pads all right, let's get to work. I have ordered a set of these Akabono ceramic brake pads. And uh, those of you who don't know this name, they pretty much make a majority of the brake pads in the world. They're not OEM BMW pads, but they're probably as similar as you can get. I also have some of this Plastilube, ATE Plastilube. We're going to put this on the pad seats and wherever the service manual says put it brake pad wear sensor typically there's two of these on the car there's either one on the front driver side wheel and the rear passenger side wheel or vice versa so uh, we'll be replacing that sensor as well then I have the actual pads here so a set for each wheel new springs so uh, a couple of air tools here a couple of torque wrenches so I don't have a trolley jack and this is going to be interesting. I don't know if my jack can actually fit up under the front to get to the central lift point. And uh, once we get the lift point up, we can put our jack stands under the, uh, the little jack cubbies on both sides near the front. But uh, we shall see. If not, I'll have to drive it up on ramps and then jack it up and then put the jack stands on it. You can see it's located right there in the middle of the vehicle and it kind of looks like that right there so that's the point we're looking for i'm gonna get into my mechanics clothing and we'll be right back with you in a snap of fingers all right we're ready to go let's see if we can get this thing on a jack all right as i suspected if you don't have one of those trolley jacks it's really long to actually get up to the uh, central lifting point for the front end of the car your typical floor jack is not going to be long enough to reach up under there and you're not going to be able to to jack it up using the handle. So what we're gonna have to do is actually drive up on the ramps and then we'll be able to get our jack under there and jack the rest of the way. And then we can put our jack stands under the, uh, the side pucks. Okay. I got my assistant mechanic working with me today. That's our jack point right there. All right, put a little block under here. Make sure we're squared up there. All right, so that's your pucks. There's one on each side near the driver's wheel and the passenger's front wheel. So we're gonna put our jack stand under there. You can see it's got a weird shape to it. They make these adapters, but we don't have any of those adapters, so we're going to try to adapt the shape of our jack stand to that puck there. Alright, you can see that these little plastic pieces are hollow, but it does have a good support up in the middle there. So, I just made these, uh, these are made out of birch plywood too, so they can take a lot of compressive force. So, I just made these little pucks to fit in there like that to even out. So that, that piece of plywood there hits the center support and then the jack stand will rest on this piece of plywood. So made one for both sides. There's the other one. All right, we got both in there. I'm gonna slowly let the jack down and then I'm gonna actually leave the jack under there and jacked up just for extra support. So you can see the space of the jacks all, all the way down. It's kind of shadowy now, but uh, the jack stands are holding all the front weight. 
So I don't have a set of uh, black sockets that fit this. There's one. There's two. There's three. There's four. There's five. Four of the lugs, one left in holding the tire up. And there's the last one. Put that on tight enough. Alright, rotor's in excellent condition. There's your brake pad where your brake pad sensor goes in. Got the little metal piece out there. Alright, so this thing is clamped twice, so it's clamped here. This piece here is clamped there, and uh, then it's also clamped up here, right there, to, uh, to this piece right here. You can see it. And then the plug is kind of hidden back behind this panel here, so we want to access this panel, so we're probably going to release this screw and this pop. That, those uh, fender well bolts are 8 millimeter. Obviously, just use a little pop tool for your uh, pop there, and then your lug nuts in case I didn't mention it before 17 millimeter all right so once you remove those you can just kind of pull this liner behind the spring and uh, that gives you access to the plug back here you can see it right there so I'm gonna unplug that and we'll get our new sensor halfway put in before we change our patch all right so that's where we just unplugged from here's the other end of the, the sensor and in order to unplug this, you're gonna to wanna to re reach around to the back side right here and see there's a little compression tab. And so you wanna just squeeze that in with your fingers in order to release that. All right, so there's our new sensor there and there's our old sensor. I'm just gonna compare these and make sure they look the same first. All right, we're just gonna connect this back in here. So you wanna make sure that uh, this piece here lines up with that tab. You can watch it click in here. There we go, so you heard that click. Make sure nothing's wrong with the connection. And then you just wanna seat it back in to the, uh, to the holder here. And then we're just gonna pull out thin the liner back into place. Make sure we're not pinching anything. That just comes out right there in that little retainer. So just put it right back in the retainer, your sensor there. And we're just gonna leave this kind of hanging for now, but it does fit into this bracket here as well. So we'll clip it into there. And then also into this bracket here. There we go. So there's our, our new sensor. And we're just gonna tuck this piece out of the way for now. All right, you can see that uh, where it comes out there, there's a perch. Here's a perch. And there's a perch up under there as well. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put our pop back in and put our two uh, bolts back in. And we'll have, that's, our sensor is basically, replacement is complete other than plugging it back in after we change our pads. And then one up here at the top. One up. Let's start working on this caliper. All right, BMW wants you to release the guide screw. At this bolt here is 13 millimeter. All right, so we have to remove that guide pin there. All right, so I just released both of the guide screws on the caliper, and I've got the caliper hanging up by a piece of wire. Be careful not to pinch the brake line there. Now we have access to our pads down here. All right, so now we're gonna to have to rewind this piston here. Not wind it, but compress it. So I'm just gonna compress it, the uh, piston back in. Man, that's not very strong. Now I'm just gonna tighten down on this till we get it flush. And I think that's it. And if you're not used to using one of these uh, piston compression tools 
And it's probably going to look weird to you, but... This is a right hand one. This is in case you need to, um, like on a Ford, on a Ford vehicle, some you need to wind the piston in. These you just need to compress. And you can see here, see I've got that piston compressed all the way in now, as far as it'll go. And that'll give us room to fit this caliper back over the new brake pad because the new brake pads are going to be thicker than the old brake pads. And these pistons are self-adjusting with the brake fluid. So you need to push this back in in order to make room to slide this floating caliper piece back over the pad. So that's what we did with this tool. And you just place this tool, this little collar here behind and you have these different adapters this one's magnetic you can just push on the face there and once you get this seated in there and lined up just tighten it down that pushes it in that's how easy that is so the other thing we're going to do here is we're going to clean this piston out with some brake cleaner and we're going to clean this face off with some brake cleaner and then it recommends putting some brake pad paste on this rim here but not to get it on the boot because the boot will swell if you get any paste on that so we're going to be very careful and do that so I'm not going to go crazy and just start spraying this stuff everywhere. It says just clean the face. So I'm just going to spray a little bit on my, uh, Jesus, a little bit on my uh, cloth here. And just I'm going to wipe the face off. And then also I'm just going to check this boot here. The boot looks great in great shape. So I think we're fine there. And then it says put some brake pad paste on the surface there. So I'm just going to throw some of this brake pad paste right on the tip of my glove there. Not much at all. And I'm just going to smear it around with my finger on the interface there. Be careful not to get it on the boot. Contact surface of brake caliper. I said now it wants just to clean the back surface here as well with brake cleaner. brake pads out uh -huh. yeah and that's where the sensor is see the sensor plugs in right there mm -hmm. all right so now we're going to clean this up a little bit it's definitely warm coating of uh, pad paste on where the brake pads sit on these carriers so I'm just gonna put a little bit in here and then we'll put some on the end of the, the actual brake pad too it's kind of a little it's kind of a lubricant kind of uh, keeps them from squealing because Kind of keep the vibration down a little bit. Here's our new brake pads, and they want us to put some, uh, they call them T heads on these uh, brake pads. So they want us to put some uh, brake pad paste on these as well. So they say go all the way around this T head here. So we're going to just throw a light. Coating across there. There's the other one. All right, let's just clip in. It's much easier than it looks. But it might take a little finagling to get them clipped in. Just spring, so we got our new pads on. Let's see. We can get our caliper back on. Let's see here. You want to hand me the bolt? 35 newton meters is the torque. The boots look okay. 
Hand me the other bolt, babe. Oh, thanks. She's faster. My assistant is faster than I am. There's our sensor plugged in, and that should do it for this side. We can put our wheel back on. Alright, so that's all I'm doing with the air gun. Okay, that's good. All right, we're on the other side. On the passenger's front wheel now, so this is a little bit easier on this side, obviously, because we don't have the brake pad sensor, so we don't have to go chase all that down. Plug it in, so basically, we're gonna remove the guide bolts on the floating part of the caliper. We'll take the caliper off, take the brake pads off, clean up where the pads sit, put some brake pad paste on where they recommend, wind the rotor back, put the new pads on, and uh, put the wheel on, we'll be good. So let's get to it.
All right, now we're inside the car and we have to reset the, uh, the brake pad indicator. So I'm just gonna press the start stop button. Foot is not on the brake. And we're gonna press the BC button over here until we see the time displayed right there. And then we're gonna press this button and hold it for a bit until the menu changes. But when I was actually in here trying to do it, I actually reset it. So, but anyhow, just uh, get to this menu. You'll find, you'll say it says reset possible. Um, and it'll show your uh, wear indicator as far as how many miles you've, you've been past service. And once you get there, just hold this button in the corner again for like three seconds. And then it'll say confirm and then release and then hold it again for another three seconds. And that'll reset it. To vehicle info status. Go down to service. And everything is okay now. So... And the brake light's off. All right, we're going to go for a test drive and see how these brakes work. And then uh, try to bed them in a little bit. All right, so we just went for a test drive just to make sure everything's fine. Brakes didn't squeal, didn't have any kind of abnormalities with the brake pad thickness sensor. We'll take it easy for about the first 200 kilometers and uh, get those pads seated in. All right, so that's going to do it for this video. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, it would be awesome if you did. We'll put out more content like this. And uh, you guys know what to do. Until next time, skill up and ride. Van up and go. Babe. Yeah, everybody needs a plan B. That's it. That's it. Cha-cha for now.